Hello everybody, this is Kismet. We're back with another episode of Goddess Revisited exclusively on the mobile using my iPad Pro and the Apple Pencil. Man, it's really fun to do it with the pencil. Keeps you from burning up your fingers and you can do a lot more shaping. I say we get right into it. Let's go. Now we've been actively playing the game for about two hours. Then we passively let the game run for about six hours with the iPad turned off. And this is gonna give us a total of eight hours played so far. Now where we left off, we've already done our first beacon. We did our Temple of Discovery, which is just on mobile. And then we did our dock and we did all of our voyages. And we also did our second beacon. And we've taken a break for a few hours so that we can align our time of when the Asari have their party in a convenient time for us to be able to come in before beforehand, boost our happiness before that party begins. And it's going to be set to whatever time it is in your local time. In my case, I'm going to do it about 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And so we'll continue to expand our population. Look at all this belief that's now built up. We'll go ahead and get our Asari out of here. We've got a new card called Happy Followers and also Divine Gifts. Now that we hit 360 peeps. Also Trees Buff Belief, which we can unlock. The Finger of God, which automatically unlocks. Really super useful. And then we're going to go ahead and shape this out. Now what I'm going to do straight away, because now I've unlocked the happiness bar over there, is go ahead and use my gems to put down a fountain. Now, in this particular playthrough, I'm going to do a double fountain playthrough. This is why I've been watching so many ads to get so many gems, is so I can put down two fountains in the very beginning of the game, and that'll allow me to double boost the happiness of my people, just like this. So we'll cause two celebrations. It will affect all the people in that area, and it will pull a bunch of people in there. Now, over here at the Asari Temple, they're having a party. Uh, normally, they come out of the temple and run around. For some reason, I don't know why they didn't do it here but I've basically got about 15 seconds to boost my happiness higher than theirs or I will lose followers. I'm also not gonna use any auto belief collection because it does require a lot of gems. We're gonna go ahead and check our fountain. It has 58 minutes left until we can use it again. We've won four followers from the Asari, so we're already off to a great start. We'll go ahead and watch an ad. We'll go ahead and click free gems in the upper right corner, watch another ad. Then we'll spend some time looking around the world to unlock some chests. And here we are, we had to game reset again, come back in again, and whenever we come back in, we have to scare off the Asari, and we'll go around and we're looking for chests. We're not only looking for chests for the main storyline, but we're also looking for chests to unlock our card. The way happiness works in the mobile version is every 24 hours, the Asari is gonna have a party, as opposed to the PC version where it's every hour. Know that the PC version stops whenever you quit out of the game, but the mobile version does not. It continues to run 24 7 even if you're not in the game the asari have those parties and my happiness will start to slide down so once you begin this section of the game you have to be very actively playing it each and every day now the reason why the finger of god is so useful is we can go ahead and start taking out these teepees and when i take them out and then take out the rocks it'll actually cause them to start building again so I won't have people going around being unhappy. So I'll start with those first. You can also boost them so they're not just sitting there so they will go to build. I'll take all these out, put it along the grid, and then sprog all of these to rebuild all this area. So now I'm getting belief from those areas, which you don't get from the tents. Now we're gonna work on our farming settlements. We're gonna upgrade it using our tin. Now we need 30 more gems to upgrade it. And now we have all these houses and all this area we can use for our farms. I don't always do farms early game, but this time I'm gonna work very hard on trying to set up farms. So we're gonna try to do farms first. And why do we wanna do farms so early game? Well, the reason why we wanna do our farms is so that we can go in and unlock Beautify. Now we also have a visitor over here, an Asari. So I'm gonna make a special place for him to live right over here. And here's a good idea. What he's gonna do is run over there and sit. And you don't want that to happen. You wanna go ahead and click on him uh, and give him a boost. And that's gonna allow him to go in and actually build up his house. He's gonna be nice and strong. So if you're having a problem with Asari not building, good idea to try to give him a boost and see if that helps. Sometimes they do get glitched out and you need a new guy to come along and build it and then you put the rest of them in there. But you definitely want to have everybody have a house, everybody uh, be as happy as possible. Now I've got a bunch of belief here. I've got 10k belief, so I'm going to go in and expand a bit on where I can. Now I can't shape the bottom areas of the ocean, so I'm going to shape just as much as I can to expand 
and try to keep that belief generator going. Because that's what I'm constantly thinking. How can I improve my belief generation? And the more you work on a grid, the more houses you can have, the more belief that's being generated in tandem. And so we got swamps not using it in this playthrough. Now right here, I need to unlock that level of sculpting so I can't expand that. So I'm gonna shift now over here to where my houses are. There's a few areas along this edge here that are broken. And so it's not gonna expand to its full size. So I just say, okay, I'll do the best I can. Go ahead and build whatever you can over there. Working on bronze age resources. That's my next big card I wanna unlock. Notice the bump there and then sprog it out. So it doesn't cost me any belief to send them over there. Unlock some more chests here. Unlock some chests down here. Just go around, try to find all these chests. Now, whenever you have a storm, sometimes your chests will end up way over here in the starter area. And so make sure to check back here every now and again for those extra chests. And now we're also going to work toward our trees buff. Not going to really use it that much early game, but we use it a little bit to help us out. And so I'll just get it started with those low level ones. Now what I've done here is I've expanded. Sadly, my video recording cut out in this section, but all I did was use the belief that I had. You can see I'm down to 7,000 belief now. Used about 3,000 belief to clear all of the area here and flatten it out. And this way I can continue to expand toward the next beacon. I'll also send some people really far in there and use my belief here to kind of shape out areas, always shaping, always adjusting, and then I'll actually block it from uh, accidentally being built. Another ad. Sometimes your people are dumb. There's nothing you can do about it. He went running way past where he was supposed to go. It happens quite often, especially when you're leashing people really far away. I'll go ahead and do a bunch of leashing here where we're gonna go ahead and lock these all into place. I find that's a much better use than sending a whole bunch of them onto one. I would rather them all run out there, lock those into place, and then I have 10, 15 of them all being built at the same time. Now I'm gonna start working on this top beacon here. As you can see, I'm gonna shape out a nice little stairwell. I'm very proud of my stairwells. I love doing them, they're really fun. Make sure they're fairly wide in this kind of case because sometimes your people are really dumb and they will get lost getting up the beacon. Collecting more belief. Again, keep that belief generation going. And here we go, upgrading every single person in here so that they're constantly building. When you've got nothing to do, boost each and every one of your people. You got If you've already done that, run an ad. If you've already done that, try to expand for 25 gems. And you definitely want to lock these in place. Oh, here we go. We've got a new card. We're at 440 population. Sculpt the oceans. Oh, that's going to be useful later on. I'm going to go ahead and shape this out right here just to block these guys from running up there. It's a great technique. You just kind of block the area. And instead of them running up there and wandering around, sometimes it's getting stuck. They'll come up, they'll, they'll stop, and then turn around and go where they should go. And here we go again, just boosting every single person. Getting a little bit going toward that tree belief. Again, not really working on it really fast. Shaping out this area to get a few more houses in over here. More shaping, and then we'll lock those in. Now remember, you can go ahead and queue this stuff up. Say this stuff's gonna take 25 minutes, you got like 15, 20 of them going, wow, look at all that belief uh, across those nice ones on the grass. And you can queue this up, go AFK, quit out of the game, come back in like 25 minutes. Oh, another game reset, we lost our sound, and we gotta get rid of the Asari again. And continue to sprog, continue to run your people up there. And I'm also gonna run the very first guy up here to the beacon, and I'm watching to make sure that he can make it up there. So always run one person up there to test it. Also, you can see the Asari falling on their face trying to run away. We're at 27 gems. Up, oh, another one, 28 now. And I'm just watching these ads. Sometimes I'll wait for them to cool down like that. Bam, and then another ad. And sometimes they don't work because it thinks there's an ad, but there's actually not an ad there. You can see it just says 50 gems. So I'll quit out of there. I'll come back to it when it recharges. Sometimes for long periods of times, you won't get ads. And so continue to boost. It is definitely worth the time. You ain't got nothing else to do anyway. I've got 7,000 belief, but it doesn't really help me right now. What I really want to do is get an 
enough belief I can make uh, some larger settlements. I don't really want to use the smallest settlements. I want to do the larger settlements. It better uses my population. Now, what can happen quite often is you send a whole bunch of people out to build stuff, whether you sprog it by, by pressing a little button on top of the houses. That's called sprogging or basically being able to run someone from nearby to build or you're leashing them when you click and hold down and then drag them where you want them to go. And then a storm will come along and interrupt all of that. Everybody will go running back into their houses and it will stop everything that you're doing, including your beacons. What will happen during the storms is some lightning will come down and add chests to your world. So it allows you to keep unlocking your cards as you go along. Now on the mobile version, they are much more rare and it takes a lot longer to unlock your cards than the PC version. I actually prefer the PC version because it's more of an active game that you can play through versus setting a whole bunch of stuff up, log out of the game, come back later, okay, now I can continue to go, log out of the game, play a little bit more, and so on. It's very, that's more of a passive game, uh, which is what the mobile version is. But just about 10,000 belief now. Oh, Meteor Strikes. We're definitely going to use that. Probably the top two things that I use is Finger of God and Meteor. So I just go in and click it just so it doesn't keep telling me to look at it. And then I'll boost everybody here. And then again, Farming Settlement. How many do we need? We need 30. We're at 29. We need one more gem. One more ad. We'll do it. Get our tree belief going on. Boosting. Again, I'm going to speed through a lot of this stuff just to make it easier. I'll leave in all the major steps so you guys can replicate whatever I do. All right, here we go. We've got our 30th gem. We still need to let them build all of this first before we use it. We've hit 525, unlocked our Iron Age resources, and now we're ready to go. We're going to upgrade our farming settlement. Now we're at two upgrades. Now we're going to have a max amount of workers of 12. Now what we're going to do is we're going to let this finish and we're going to try to figure out where we want to get it. Now notice as the house is kind of being in and out of the area, you know you're at maximum when the house is, even in the circle, are not highlighted. Like this one in the bottom left corner there. Notice it unhighlights as I go upward. All right, that tells you you're going to get your maximum farm out of this. And so I try different places. Until I kind of find that maximum area and then I kind of settle in. Looks pretty good right there. We've kind of maximized the, the amount that we could do. Also, sometimes I'll do it and then do it again just to add to it. But there we go. Our first farm locked in and ready to go. Now, on the mobile version, this takes a really long time for these farmers to show up. So think of that as, hey, I'm going to do that next time. So we're going to go ahead and again collect all of our stuff. We're going to go ahead and do another farming settlement because we have lots of belief. And if we don't get the maximum, that's okay. We just want to get it started because each of these is going to take like 30 minutes or an hour. In this case, 45 minutes for that one to show a second one. We start with one already, but they've also got to build up all of the breeders in there. So that's got to build up after a while. Some of your people might also be still building. Oh, we've unlocked our ore miners there. No ads available, even though it says there's ads available. Let's get rid of that. Frog the rest of this again. Finishing up this top part here. Right now, our goal is not to sprog out. We don't want to do any more building in the lower area. Let's go ahead and shape this out here so we get a few more buildings in here. And so we're going to go ahead and test this out a few times, trying to find out where we want to center this at. We definitely still want to build on the side there, so it'll grab those as well. So we'll get enough. And if we get 10, 11, 12 of them, then we're doing good. Now, right about now, you should be thinking, what is the purpose of this game? What is my goal? Your goal is to build up so many farm plots and so many mining plots to unlock certain things in the game. And you need so many things of wheat and you need so many things of ore to unlock future beacons so that should always be in your mind how do i get enough farms and enough mining going that i can unlock my future beacons and i can unlock my next cards that i need your early beacons here you don't need wheat and you don't need ore but the more people you put it on there the faster it's going to go up to a point so we'll send a few more people up here we'll keep working on our area down here now we don't want to leave until we use up our belief to make another farm this way the farm is is generating more farmers while we're not even playing the game. Incredibly, incredibly great tip. Is try to queue up as many things that can be running 
while you're not playing the game. I call it set it and forget it. There we go. We're at five at 11, but we still got to get our breeders going. Collect all of your belief. Do not build any more houses. Try to send as many people as you can to your beacon. It's got 22 minutes left. We'll check our fountain. We'll boost our happiness. So this will be on cooldown. All right, we're going to jump forward by a bunch of time here. We let all of our farms build up a bunch of farmers. When we come back in, we got to get rid of the Asari here. We've unlocked super fast building. And now it's unlocked our wheat area as well. And we're going to collect all the wheat over here. Now, I never use these wheat farms. We've also unlocked our third beacon. And that's going to unlock one of the toughest ones in the game. Probably the most one I get questions about. Beacon number four here. How to get past this beacon. Well, it actually tells you. It says use beautify to clear the swamp. And we're going to do it in this playthrough. And what we're going to need is a bunch of farms. And it doesn't matter the size of the farms. It only matters if you have a certain amount. And so I'm going to shape out the ground. I'm going to readjust it here. So I get the kind of maximum amount of farms I can get going. I like them to, to be in the front of the farm. This way they have the minimum amount of distance to walk back and rest. We'll collect a bunch of our belief here. We're at 25,000 belief. And then we'll work on each and every farm. We've unlocked our reign of purity, which allows us to speed up our farms, our larger abodes. We've unlocked that card. Uh, we can go in and put some stickers on it to truly unlock it. We're going to go ahead and start all of our farmers going. You can see I've got certain areas blocked. Builder settlement, which I feel is not very useful on the mobile version. Much better on the PC version. Fitter followers, not going to use it. And now we're going to use our finger of God to get rid of this one here in the back so that this guy will be more in the front. I prefer to have the farms in the front area of my settlement so they have the least distance to walk back in rest and come back out again and there it is we've unlocked our beautify so we're going to go over here to our beacon we have 27,000 belief now we're going to go ahead and choose our beautify and we're just going to run it over the top of this here to beautify the area clean it up so our people don't die then we're going to start shaping out the area so our people can get up to there we're going to remove our different chests and I suggest to clear out all the stuff in the way. We're gonna remove the rock down here on the steps. We're gonna remove all the other rocks. We're gonna go ahead and get the Asari out of there. We're gonna start removing the trees. And we're gonna go ahead and leash some people up there, get that beacon going. And that's how you do beacon number four. It does take a lot of patience to do it this way. As you notice, I'm taking out every one of these fields. The reason why I do that is later on, I'm gonna be using my meteor. Watch another ad. Ad number 40 now. I saw like an inappropriate ad, didn't like that. So I reported that one. I'll go in and get all the chests here. Now, if I leave those farms there and I drop the meteor on there, it'll drop my happiness bar way down to a point where it's really hard to recover from. Cause I know I'm not gonna use those farms. So I might as well just take them out. My peeps working on the fourth beacon here, need a little bit of help so they can get up into the beacon, go ahead and shape it out here, and they'll eventually find their way up there. And then I'll remove all the trees again, getting that extra belief, but also kind of making it easier for me to find all these chests, removing all the rocks, shaping out all the areas. We'll go ahead and send these farmers over here, get ourselves some more chests, take out all the rocks, and then go around and take out every single tree and rock I can find. The storm came through, dropped off more chests and eventually when you get through all of these blue chests it will start to give you stickers instead of doing storyline now we'll get the wheat from over here go ahead and get ourselves some belief there and here's a little tricky one sometimes it's right in the middle of your area we need to go in there shape it in and then i shape it back in the other way because we have all of our farms in there now you can see we got 12 of 12 farmers going zero unemployed and we'll go and check each and every settlement make sure that they're all being used right now all three of them are being used now I'll go around and shape in and try to flatten some area out here. And this is in preparation of using the meteor later on. If I hit this with meteor right now, it'll dig it down so far. And if I don't have scope the oceans, I won't be able to put it back in again. So I'll go in and shape in all of the sand, but not build on the sand, but just shape it in. So when I use my meteor, it doesn't go down too far. We'll now fill in the areas with more houses. We'll check on our beacon up here. Go ahead and boost this guy. Another 36 minutes on there. Always looking for areas that are real cheap to uh, to expand in some areas i will use meteor to get rid of oh, there's our next age abodes and some areas i will actually just shape out and now we're going to check out our meteor here we're going to upgrade it now we need 20 more gems to go to the next level i suggest upgrading your meteor twice so you're going to be watching a ton of ads now that's it for here for episode two make sure to hit that subscribe button hit that like button down below and feel free to share a comment if you did enjoy this guide or if you have any questions down below and i will see you guys in the next one 
Hey everybody, Kismet here. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button right in the center of the screen. Also, check me out live on twitch.tv slash kismet. I'll see you all next time.